Mark Newman, author of the Super Uper books, which are based on the continuing saga of invasive species in the Great Lakes. For the past decade, I've been visiting schools across the Midwest and Canada, sharing my message about invasive species with thousands and thousands of students. I wrote my first book, Super Uper Environmental Defender, with my friend, artist Mark Heckman, a colorful, bigger-than-life artist who believed that youth are the future, and it's kids, not adults, who are going to save the planet. Our book is about a superhero who battles invasive species in an effort to protect the Great Lakes. What are invasive species? Non-native fish, plants, insects. Some are cool, some are creepy, but all of them are bad in some fashion. They might be bad for the water, bad for our lands, bad for our trees or plants. But they're usually not bad for humans. Well, at least not in most cases. What is a youper? Well, I'm from the state of Michigan, which has two parts called peninsulas. A peninsula is a piece of land nearly surrounded by water. The lower peninsula, we call the mitten. Can you see how it looks like a mitten? There's the thumb. The upper part is the upper peninsula which is a beautiful part of the country where people value the outdoors. They love nature. Take the first letter of each word. Upper starts with U. Peninsula starts with P. Put them together. U, P, U, Burr. U, P, U, Burr. So people from the area are called Upers. And because the main character is a superhero, he's a super Uper. When it came time to write the second book, it was obvious the main character needed help. So many invasive species, so little time. So I put together a team of real-life superheroes, all based on real scientists, to help him in his quest, his mission, to protect the Great Lakes. The second book is called Super Uper, The Quest of the Blue Crew. Super Uper, Rockman to the Rescue, is based on the story of a real artist from New York City named Alexis Rockman. He's brought to the Great Lakes to draw attention to what's happening. Get it? An artist who draws attention? The cover shows his worst nightmare. He's riding a giant Asian carp outside the city of Chicago in Lake Michigan. I said, his worst nightmare? Actually, it will be our worst nightmare if it ever becomes true. Because even though the size there, that's a little bit of an exaggeration. They really are big fish. It's no exaggeration to say that Asian carp will ruin the Great Lakes if they ever find their way in. Super Uper, hero to others, takes us back to the beginning. It's the origin story. How as a young boy did he get interested in the Great Lakes? How did he eventually become an environmental superhero? How did he become a hero to others? Also known as H2O. And H2O, of course, is the formula for water. So all the titles start with Super Uper. And the name of the main character is Billy Cooper, the Super Uper. And that's the only rhyme in the first book because I'm not Dr. Seuss. So I didn't write the book in rhyme, in verse. But my second book has the world's first, and I think he's the only one in the entire world. This book has the world's first and only rapping scientist. That's right, when that character speaks, he raps. He talks in rhyme. Now, why did Mark Heckman and I decide to write a book about Super Uper and his friends? Well, we knew these important facts. 97% of the world's water is salt water. Only 3% is fresh water. And what is the largest freshwater system in the world? The Great Lakes. The Great Lakes have roughly 20% of the world's fresh water. Now you might think, who cares? If you live in Michigan, Illinois, Indiana, Minnesota, New York, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, or Ontario, you might say, so what? I never go to Lake Ontario. Lake Huron, Lake Michigan, Lake Erie, or Lake Superior. I don't go swimming. Or maybe you don't know how to swim. Well, think about this important fact. 40 million people in North America, including 8 million Canadians, depend upon the Great Lakes for their drinking water. Do you drink water? Water is obviously important. Do you brush your teeth? Water is important. Do you ever take a bath or a shower? Water is important. We often don't think about it. We take it for granted. But water is a very important natural resource. Maybe you like to eat fish. A lot of good eating fish come from the Great Lakes. Maybe you just like the outdoors. Fishing, swimming, boating, canoeing. All those require water. So Mark and I decided to make Billy Cooper our superhero 
to guard the Great Lakes. Now, when you're writing a story, you have to think of details. And Mark Heckman asked, if we're going to write a story about a superhero who's guarding our water, guarding our fish, what superpower are we going to give him? I said, ooh, good question. So he made a long list of potential superpowers. Maybe he could breathe underwater. Maybe he could talk to fish. Or swim super fast. Maybe he's invisible. Or maybe he's super strong. Or maybe he could shapeshift and turn into other creatures, become like an octopus with eight arms. Or maybe he could fly from one lake to another. The longer we thought about it, the longer the list became. Finally, we stopped and thought, wait a minute. First off, we already have Aquaman. He has some of these superpowers. And then when we thought about it deeper, we thought, wait a minute, who's really going to guard the Great Lakes? Obviously, it's up to us. We have to be like superheroes and protect our waters, protect our lands. So we decided to make him just like us. We didn't give him just one superpower. Sure, he's strong, athletic, a good swimmer, but we wanted the message that it's going to be up to us to guard the Great Lakes. So, no superpowers then. Instead, we did something else. We gave him a super friend, a sidekick, an English bulldog named Mighty Mac. Now, why do we call our English bulldog Mighty Mac? Well, there's a world-famous bridge in Michigan that connects the two peninsulas. It's called the Mackinac Bridge. We refer to it as the Mighty Mac. Mac for Mackinac. That single bridge is nearly five miles long, about eight kilometers in length. It's the longest suspension bridge in the Western Hemisphere. So we have our hero, Billy Cooper. We have his assistant, Mighty Mac. He's sniffing out the problems. Well, for a good story, you need a villain. Well, the Great Lakes are filled with villains, over 180 different invasive species. Now, I use the word villains. Technically, they're not bad, they're not evil, but they don't belong. They're non-native. So once they come in, scientists spend a lot of time, money, and effort either trying to control their movement, where these are going to end up, or control their numbers, how many there are, so they don't ruin our five Great Lakes. And I hope you know your five Great Lakes, but if you don't, there's an easy way to remember. Think of the word Holmes. It's the first letter of each Great Lake. H is for Huron, O is for Ontario, M is for Michigan, E is for Erie, and S is for Superior. Now, I once had a student that asked, are all these invasive species in the Great Lakes? I said, yes. She said, well, it's a good thing my family's moving. Well, no matter where you live in the world, no matter the state, no matter the country, whether you live in California or Michigan or Florida, whether you live in Australia or Canada or England or India or New Zealand, you have invasive species. And that's what this channel is all about. I invite you to hit that like button. And if you choose, please subscribe. I hope you learned something. And thanks for watching.